Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so glad that you're here because it's gonna be good. So, welcome. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Doreen Achampong. I am a 25 year old. I live in Baltimore, Maryland and um, I'll do an introduction video later but the purpose of this video channel um, is really just to talk about the Word of God. I really love to talk but most importantly I actually love to talk about the Word of God. Um, so the purpose of this channel really is just to kind of um, come on here and to um, discuss some biblical truth to talk about things that I feel like is relevant um, to our culture or just whatever the Holy Spirit lays on my heart um, for the month or for that week. And so I really hope that you are blessed by these uh, videos. And please feel free to comment. Or if you have any questions or any um, contributions, just feel free to comment. And we can talk about it as we go along. So before, before we start, I just want to open up with a quick prayer. And then we'll go ahead and begin. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you so much for... Um, this evening, Lord, we thank you so much that we get to come together just to study your word. Thank you so much that you are still teaching us. Thank you so much that you're still guiding us into your truth. We thank you for your word that is a double-edged sword that pierces through our heart and penetrates through the bone and the marrow, Lord. We want to thank you so much for your word that is light, that has come to bring um, light into this dark world. Thank you so much that... Um, that you're about to reveal more of yourself to us even as we study today. We are so grateful and I ask that Lord even as I'm about to um, teach today or as I'm about to start this video Lord may I not speak from my own understanding but Lord I just pray and ask that your Holy Spirit will lead and guide me. May I decrease Lord even as you decrease today. I thank you in Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So um we're going to jump right in and like I said, as you're watching the video, if you have any questions or whatever, feel free to um, comment at the bottom. If I don't, if you want more clarification on something, just feel free to comment. Um, so as you see, the title of the video is Four Ways You Are Grieving the Holy Spirit. Four Ways You Are Grieving the Holy Spirit. So recently I started doing a devotion on the Bible app. I realized that I kind of just wanted more of God, you know. I just wanted more of Him, more, more of His presence. So I just started doing. I started doing a devotional on the Bible app, and on my devotional there was a um, a devotion for a specific day that really stood out to me. And um, part of that devotion was talking about how we are resisting the Holy Spirit, or how sometimes we resist the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so I thought it was so important, and it really related to me, and it really resonated with me. And oftentimes I don't want to teach about anything that has not been revealed to me or anything that I have not gotten a personal re revelation on. So everything you hear on this channel, the Lord has taught me first before I'm coming to teach you all. So, um, like I said, the topic for today's discussion is four ways you are grieving the Holy Spirit. Many of us don't know that the Holy Spirit can be grieved, especially believers. We don't know that there are things that we are doing in our lives right now that are causing the Holy Spirit to be grieved. And so we are living our lives anyway. We are living our lives contrary to the Word of God. We are saying things. We are doing things. And we are wondering why we are not experiencing the power of God in our lives. It's because the Holy Spirit that dwells and lives within us is being grieved by the things that we are doing, whether knowingly or unknowingly. So the purpose of this would really be to kind of teach us some things that we do to grieve the Holy Spirit. So, um, Four things, four things, and we're going to get right into those four things. So, the first thing, the first thing, first way in which we greet, and I'm, I have my notes right here, that's why I'm looking down, I have my notes. But the four things, the first thing of the four that we do, which grieves the Holy Spirit, is despising and ridiculing things belonging to God despising and ridiculing things belonging to God. And I first want to read from Matthew chapter 12, verse 31, which will give us a better understanding. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. So the Word of God says, Matthew chapter 12, verse 31, it says, um, Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. The blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven forgiven so let me give us some context about this right so um in this scripture jesus christ had just healed a man that was demon oppressed right so the man was demon oppressed and he was blind and he was mute so after the lord healed him everybody saw that the lord had healed him but then the pharisees were like this person um 
um, like the Pharisees were doubting and were saying that you know Jesus Christ um, had an evil spirit, pretty much saying that um, it's only it's only um, G like Jesus Christ had an evil spirit, and that's why he was able to um, um, heal that man, or um, like that's why he was able to cast out that demon. And so they were pretty much denying the power of God. They were pretty much de um, denying the healing power of God. And so Jesus Christ said that every sin will be forgiven except for the sin of blasphemy. And so one way that, the, like the first way that we grieve the Holy Spirit is despising or, ridicu or ridiculing things belonging to God. Many of us, there are things in the Word of God that we don't believe. Like we don't believe in, 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 in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm like, we don't believe in speaking in tongues. Um, we don't believe in healings and in prophecies. We think that the things of God are a lie. And so these are things that we do that grieves the Holy Spirit. And why is it grieving the Holy Spirit? Because these are the very things that the Holy Spirit does, like prophecy, like healing. The Holy Spirit aids in these things. And so if we pretty much say that these things are not real, then we're saying that the Holy Spirit is not real. And that's what the Word of God is saying is that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. That's one way that we grieve the Holy Spirit. When we deny the things that the Holy Spirit is doing, when we deny the power that the Holy Spirit is demonstrating through people or demonstrating through others. That's one way that we grieve the Spirit of God. And so Jesus Christ says that every sin will be forgiven except for blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Right? Why is that? Because when you deny the works of the Holy Spirit, you're pretty much denying God. Because the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not a lesser version of God. The Holy Spirit is God. So when you deny the works of the Holy Spirit or you despise the works of the Holy Spirit, you're pretty much saying that... Um, the works of God is not real and that cannot be forgiven because you're pretty much denying the power and the presence of God. So that is the first way that we grieve the Holy Spirit. The second way that we grieve the Holy Spirit or that you grieve the Holy Spirit, that I grieve the Holy Spirit is neglecting the gift of God given to us. Neglecting the gift of God given to us. Guys, the Holy Spirit, if you read the book of um, 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit, right? And so Paul talks to us about how the gifts of the Spirit, some is faith, some is um, um, word of knowledge, some is healing, some is prophecy. And if you read the book of um, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, Paul tells Timothy that do not neglect the gift of God that was given to you by the placing of hands from the elders. He says do not neglect that gift. And so one way that we grieve, the second way that we grieve the Holy Spirit is by neglecting the gift that the Holy Spirit has placed within us. Many of us, there's a lot of gifts that the Lord has placed within us, whether maybe it's not healing. Maybe the Lord has given you a gift to, to, to evangelize, to speak to people, to draw people unto the saving knowledge of Christ. But you refuse to do that. You're afraid. You're saying that, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want people to think that I'm weird. You grieve in the Holy Spirit because you're not activating the gift that he has placed within you. And so... That is one way, or that is the second way that we grieve the Holy Spirit. When we are not walking according to the gift that He has given us. Many of us, the Lord is calling us to so many different things. Um, like We receive so many confirmations, or the Lord has spoken to us individually about the gifts that He has placed in our lives. But we're not walking in those gifts. And every day that we continue to disobey and not walk in those gifts, we are grieving the Spirit of God. So that is the second way that we grieve the Spirit of God. Remember the first one we said was despising and ridiculing things belonging to God. The second one is neglecting the gift of God given to us. So just as Paul told Timothy that do not neglect the gift of God that was given unto you when the elders placed their hands on you, the Word of God is telling us that whatever gift the Lord has given you, whatever assignment the Lord has given you, whatever purpose the Lord has given you, do not neglect it. Because it's pretty much like the Holy Spirit has given you a gift. Imagine somebody giving you a gift and you say, well, I don't want the gift. I don't keep your gift. I don't want it. That person is going to feel some type of way. They're going to be like, what's going on? You know, I gave you this gift and you don't want it. That person is going to feel some type of way. They're going to be grieved. They're going to be like, well, why don't they want the gift? In that same way, the Holy Spirit is grieved when we neglect the gifts and the giftings and the talents that he has placed in us to use for the kingdom of God. And so... We have to be careful that we don't neglect the gift that God has given us. And so the third way that we neglect the gift, I'm sorry, the third way that we grieve the Holy Spirit is when we willingly commit sin against God. When we willingly commit sin against God. Now, this is so huge, right? Because I think this is something that we often overlook in our world today where Christians, even Christians, are living their lives any way they want to. We don't have any regard for the Word of God. 
we don't have any regard for the things of God. We just live our lives how we want to. We have our own belief system. We have our own truth because we think truth is relative. We do things however we want to do. We have no regard for the word of God. We pick and choose where in the word of God we want to follow. But one of the biggest ways that we grieve the Holy Spirit is to willingly commit sin. And not only just that, but sexual immorality. The word of God tells us in the book of... Um, in the book of 1 Corinthians, it says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives within you? So, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And, and it continues to say that any sin that a man commits outside of his body is, you know, outside of his body. But whoever commits sexual morality has sinned against himself. And not only that, but you have sinned against the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is a spirit and it dwells within you. A spirit. Spirit cannot just dwell anywhere. A spirit needs a body to dwell in. And so the Holy Spirit lives within you. And so every time you commit a sin, think about it. The Holy Spirit, He is holy. He is without sin. Whenever you sin, He has to pretty much, um, um, uh, you know, like wash that. Pretty much has to be around you doing that. And so the Holy Spirit is grieved every single time you commit a sinful act. Every single time you are, are, are sleeping with that person that you're not married to. Every time that you're masturbating. Every time that you are drinking. Every time that you are getting um, um, high. Every time that you are doing things that goes against the word of God. You are grieving the spirit of God. And I don't care how anybody spends it. I don't care what who has told you what. The Word of God says that we grieve the Holy Spirit when we commit sexual morality or any sinful acts. The Word of God tells us in the book of Peter, it says, Be holy because I am holy. And without holiness, no one can see God. There is no two ways about it. There is no two ways about it. We've been grieving the Holy Spirit so much in our lives because we want to continue to indulge in sin. And then we wonder why, you know, so-and-so is, is, is operating in their gifts and so-and-so is, is being so used mightily by the Lord. Because they have chosen to set themselves apart. They have chosen to not walk with, um, um, with impurity and to not walk with sinners. But we want to indulge in sin and still be used by God. It doesn't work that way. The Lord will not continue to use us if we're living in sin. Or if he does use you, at the end of it all, he's going to tell you that depart from me, I never knew you. And so it's a lose-lose for you. It's either you do it right this time or you lose on the day of judgment. And so once again... We grieve the Holy Spirit when we willingly commit sin against God. When we willingly commit sin against God. Sexual morality, sin, anger, um, 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 pride, unforgiveness. These things we are grieving the Spirit of God. And it's literally like we're silencing the Spirit of God within us. We're silencing the Spirit of God and He's not able to operate freely the way that He wants to. Because He's holy. He will not operate in sin. He is holy. He will not operate in, 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 in filth. He says we should be holy for he is holy. The fourth way, the fourth way that we grieve the Holy Spirit of God is neglecting the fruits of the Spirit. Now this one really got me because, you know, like it's one of those things that you heard all the time. But then when you finally kind of get a revelation of it for yourself, you're like, wow, this is real. So. One way that we grieve the Spirit of God is by neglecting the fruits of the Spirit. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. And it says, Okay, so it says, But the fruit of the Spirit, mind you, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such these against such things there is no law. Okay. So, how are we grieving the Holy Spirit when we are neglecting the fruits of the Spirit? Well, the fruits of the Spirit are directly a product of the Holy Spirit. You cannot operate in the fruits of the spirit if the holy spirit is not dwelling within you you cannot operate successfully and effectively in the fruit of the spirit if the holy spirit is not active and living within you and so we grieve the holy spirit when we neglect the fruits of the spirit and so whenever so it says that the fruit of the spirit let's say is love joy so whenever you're walking in hatred you are grieving the holy spirit Whenever you are walking in impatience, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. 
whenever you're walking in bitterness, the opposite of maybe, let's say, kindness, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. Whenever you're walking in unfaithfulness, which is also idolatry, putting something before God, um, magnifying other things before God, creating other idols before God, you are, um, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. Whenever you lack self-control, whenever you're impulsive and you're not able to think about things, you just act on your emotions, you act on your hormones, you are grieving the Spirit of God. And so the fruit of the Spirit is, 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 is an outcome or is a product of the Holy Spirit being activated in us. But we can't do that if the Spirit of God is grieved within us. We cannot operate in the fruits of the Spirit if the Holy Spirit is grieved. Because how el who's going to enable us to do it? If that very spirit is grieved in us, who's going to allow us to operate? And so think about it. This was really big for me because, you know, um, like like this last week, I was struggling with a lot of like fear. You know, I was doing my devotional. My devotional was telling us to talk about things that we struggle with, right? And so I was like writing down in my journal and I was writing down fear. And the Holy Spirit just let me like, you know, how are you, like you're grieving the Holy Spirit every time you're afraid. Because you know what his word says? He says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, right? And so how are you... How do you say that you have the Holy Spirit in you, but you are walking in fear? Then you are literally dimish, diminishing the work of the Holy Spirit in your life if you're continuously walking in fear. And so that was like a revelation for me. I'm like, Doreen, you cannot walk in fear and like be operating in the fruits of the Spirit. Or like you're grieving the Holy Spirit every time you're afraid. You're grieving the Holy Spirit every time you're doubting. You're grieving the Holy Spirit every time you're rejecting love. You're grieving the Holy Spirit every time you're lacking self-control. You're grieving the Holy Spirit every time you're impatient. So whenever we act contrary to the fruits of the Spirit, we are grieving the Holy Spirit. And so I don't want to make this video long and I kind of want to bring it all together. So the four things that we've talked about so far in regards to the four ways that you're grieving the Holy Spirit is despising or ridiculing things belonging to God, um, willingly committing sin against God, neglecting the gift of God that has been given to you, and neglecting the fruit of the spirit so when we look in the word of god the word of god tells us that the holy spirit is our helper the holy spirit is our comforter the holy spirit is our is our um teacher now how can the holy spirit be all these things to us if we are consistently quenching that fire within us by the four things that i i discussed earlier if the Holy Spirit is grieved and if the Holy Spirit is quenched within us, how can he be a helper? How can he be a comforter? How can he be a teacher? And so that's why many of us are weary because that spirit, the Holy Spirit that's supposed to be our helper, we have quenched him. And so now we're trying to do things all by ourselves. And so we're anxious and then we're weary and we're worn out because that helper that is supposed to be helping us, we have grieved him. And so he is not even activating the way that he's supposed to be in our lives. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be our comforter. But we've grieved them, and so many of us are depressed. Many of us are lonely. We've found ourselves in situations. We've grieved the Holy Spirit. Many of us are lacking knowledge because the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And we've grieved them. And so he's, you know, we no longer have insight into the Word of God. Like we no longer have understanding of the Word of God because we've grieved the Spirit of God. And so what I want to leave us with today, hopefully by the grace of God, you learned something today. Hopefully, even as I was speaking, the word of God was ministering to you. But this is a message for all of us that what are you doing? That what, what is causing you? And, you know, there might be more things than these four things that I label. There's other things that we do that can grieve the spirit of God. But these are the things that I wanted to touch on. But I just want you to examine yourself. Many of us want to experience the power of God in our lives, but we are doing things that are causing the Spirit of God to be quenched and to be grieved in our lives. So then how is it that we can experience the power and the glory of God? It is not possible. We have to come to a place where we examine ourselves, look at the things that we've been doing that has caused the Spirit of God to be grieved, and begin to repent. Repent. Go before the Lord and say, Father, I repent of these things that I've done. I need to be restored. I need to be revived. I need your spirit to be activated in me once again. Because the truth of the matter is, as a believer on this earth, without the Holy Spirit, you will not be successful. Without the Holy Spirit, you will not finish this race. Without the Holy Spirit, you will give up. We need the Holy Spirit. And so, if we need him, we might as well have him be activated and, you know, up and running in our lives. Because we cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit. So, um... I pray that this was a blessing, and I just want to close out in a quick prayer um, and just um, just wrap this up and just allow the Lord to do um, His work. And so I just want to close this out in prayer in Jesus' name. 
And so, Father Lord, we want to thank you so much for your word today. We thank you for teaching us, God. Thank you for reminding us, Lord Jesus, about how important your Holy Spirit is, Lord. Father, when you left, you knew that we could not do this life on our own. And so you left us with the helper. You left us with an advocate, Lord Jesus. And for so long, we have grieved that advocate, Lord. And so we've been doing life on our own. But Father, today we repent, God. We repent of our sins. We repent of our unrighteousness. We repent, Lord Jesus, of our ignorance, Lord. And we just ask that the Holy Spirit will just be um, ignited and revived in our hearts and in our minds once again, in, in our lives once again, Lord Jesus. We don't want to do this thing on our own own we just ask that lord you will have mercy on us lord jesus and rekindle any fire in us that has gone out we want to thank you so much for the opportunity to learn your word and we pray that you will continue to minister to people even after they've watched this video i thank you and i give you glory in jesus name we have prayed amen so thank you for watching uh don't forget to like comment subscribe <laughs> and um I will see you next time. God bless you and have a great day, evening, morning, and I'll see you soon.